I'm not asking you to believe anything, but I'm inviting you to have an open mind and be open to the possibility that there may be a deeper level to who you are. First of all, I'd like to suggest that you make sure that you're still breathing. Because in the moment of checking whether you're breathing, you're not thinking. Between now and now, where you're thinking, can't stop thinking, it's like can't stop drinking, can't stop smoking, can't stop eating, can't stop thinking. Thinking is the greater addiction than any of these. A lot of the overactivity of the mind is an attempt to get away from the isness, the simplicity of the present moment. It's a state of consciousness, not some weird belief system that we need to adopt. It's more, much more fundamental and much more simple. Continuously, I, when I observe people, how easily they, they lose themselves continuously in whatever arises. And primarily, they lose themselves in their mind, in their thinking. I have to think about that. I have to deal with that. I have to make that. So in the absence of presence, there's only repetitive mental noise that is hoping at some point in the future it will no longer be problematic. A problem cannot be solved on the same level of consciousness that created the problem. And so that really is the determining factor when you are faced with the challenges of life. How do you react or how do you respond to that which arises in your life in the present moment, of course, because there is nothing else. Your entire life consists of the present moment and only the present moment ever. Now, most people, perhaps they, in some abstract way, they know that, but they cannot sense or feel the truth of that and I'd like to invite you to actually sense and feel the truth of what I'm saying which no, no the, even if there's a great philosopher here he cannot possibly argue he or she cannot argue with this statement that what, whatever you experience ever is present moment there is your entire life unfolds in the present moment that's all you ever have most people don't live as if this were true, they don't, they live as if the opposite almost were true, as if the, the future moment were more important always than the next one. And that is, that happens because of excessive identification with thinking, because usually the thoughts are about the next thing, the next, and the next, or what could happen or might happen. We talk about different levels of the present moment from sense perceptions to the feeling of aliveness in the inner body, to the realization that ultimately what we call the present moment and the light of consciousness are one and the same because that's the thing that always remains. And that consciousness, you can, you can sense it as yourself right now, the presence that you are, even beyond the physical presence. And that, that is the alertness, that is the, the realization that is sometimes called awakening. And that is the place of, also of stillness, where you get out of the mental noise. And that is the source place of creativity. That is intelligence that is non-conceptual. It's primordial intelligence. And if you touch that in yourself, then at first as glimpses, as brief realizations, and then gradually integrate it into your daily life, then you can live from that place, the source, and be a, not only a more productive human being, but also a more peaceful human being because then you no longer contribute to the conflict in this world because the conflict is only created by all those humans who don't know that level in themselves. They don't know who they are. And again, to quote Jesus again, 
on the cross he said forgive them they know not what they do because and why do they know not what they do they don't know who they are essentially in the hope that as i'm speaking there is a an experience in you of really of what the depths of the present moment because the present moment people think it's present moment is what happens and of course because what happens changes all the time people say there are many present moments if you look more deeply of course there are not many present moments there's only ever this present moment there's only this ever <laughs> so there are not many present moments there's only the space of this moment so there's what happens in it and there is the space in which it happens and that space is consciousness and that is who you are and when you realize that you become free of the false sense of self which that your mind tells you something about who you are which has to do with your history and your successes or your failures or what other people tell you who you are a little prison so that's really basically the essence of spirituality which is very simple but for some reason it's not taught at school all kinds of inessential things are taught at school <laughs> but what really matters the very foundation of human life and it's not some belief structure i'm not saying indoctrinate children the children must believe it's not belief at all it's an experience it's a realization that's what needs to be taught it's that needs to be subject number one at school who am i and everything else is easy once you have that it never takes long for another thought to come in and ask a question because thought cannot tolerate the state of presence so it will always come in and say yeah but what about i don't quite understand yet <laughs> Can you t tell me what does it all mean? So it wants to add something. It wants to control in some way by understanding what this all means. If you can let go, just for a moment, not for the rest of your life, just for this moment, <laughs> let go of the need to understand anything so that you're truly present in this moment. So you don't need to do it for the next hour or the next 10 minutes, just right now. What is. But don't forget yourself because you are the consciousness behind it. You are the space, the presence. If a thought comes into your mind, you can watch that also. Just the same way as you watch a dog walking past, you can watch a thought arising in your mind. And you don't have to follow it to where it wants to go. So you simply watch the thought that arises in your mind and let it go in the same way that the dog walks past you. Or if you choose to, you can follow the thought and then you can say, I just thought of another question. Okay, then you can do that too. But to see the possibility that also in the same way that you observe the outer world here, you can also observe the inner world the world of thoughts and emotions. Thoughts want to arise continuously, and that's fine, that's what they do. But there's no need to get drawn into each thought that arises and immediately go with it to where it wants to go. Otherwise, you're just, you're always following every thought. <laughs> like, the, like a dog following the scent. <laughs> Does it matter which? No, it doesn't matter, you can, experiment. You can experiment with thought, you can follow some thoughts and you can watch other thoughts. You find out for yourself. You can play. You can see that you are bigger than your thoughts. You don't have to be dominated by your thoughts because thoughts create lot of pro lots of problems too. Unnecessary problems and they can obscure the aliveness of life at this moment. There are many people walking around here who are thinking about other things. So they're thinking about the next one, they're thinking about tomorrow. But this is not the place for that. There is a place for planning and thinking about tomorrow. But why spoil the beauty of this and the aliveness of this with thinking about the next moment? Is that going to be better than this one? This is it. It's not going to get that much better. What could, could be more beautiful than this? 
It's the awakening of something within you that is deeper than thought. That's really the main thing. And that's already there, you just didn't know it. To be at one with life is to be at one with the present moment because that's the only place where life can be found. You cannot leave the space of now.